This episode is brought to you by Sumpin' Donuts. Recaf, we have it. You need it. Sumpin' Donuts. High Primus runs on Sumpin'. Hey there, scabby scummers and gangers. Crimson Oracle here with another episode of Dome Runners TV. I'm coming to you with a completion on a project I started gosh a few weeks ago at least when i hit 600 subscribers i promised that i would do a full repaint on a mcfarlane sister of battle model after an extensive amount of work uh, spread over several weeks i have officially completed the project i'm very excited to show it off uh, i'm very happy with how she turned out and i just uh you know i, I couldn't be happier with uh, the way the process went, I had never done anything on that scale before, um, and I was a little nervous that I would run into speed bumps, but it turned out to be a really straightforward process. I got to do some oil washing, I got to do cleanup work with mineral spirits and all that stuff. It was a really fun project, and I recorded all of it here, so you guys get to enjoy the process too, and the final product. Uh, I wanted to note that I... It feels like it's been a long time since I put a video up. It's only been a week, um, but I have gotten in the habit of posting two to three times a week. And that is probably not a pace that I can maintain over the summer as uh, I am a stay at home mom and my kids will be home for the summer. Additionally, I am starting to look for work. So if I get a job, it's very likely that my pace will have to slow down just through necessity. Um, but the plus side is that if I do manage to get a job, then I am going to be putting some budget into making this show even better from, you know, spending some money on buying the transitions and titles and art and music that I want to, uh, you know, having more adventurous projects and various other things. So I'm really hoping that the process goes well. Uh, I am going to be, you know, um, hoping to find something remote because um, I really uh, don't think after eight years out of the office that I can really go back to that lifestyle. Uh, it's just not for me. So with that, uh, I thank you all for watching. And of course, if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, go ahead and drop a like on this video and uh, subscribe on the channel. And now check out my sister of battle. So starting out, I actually did a video of priming and taking apart the model, but unfortunately those videos got lost. So we're sort of starting um, with the model already pulled apart. And I have started the process of blocking in the main color because I'm doing Sisterhood of the Bloody Rose. And that color is Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint. Now, this is not the extent of color that we're gonna do, but I like to use a slightly watered down Blood Angels Red for a vibrant red base. Uh, if you were going for a darker red, then uh, the other contrast red works way better. But since I wanted the armor to be kind of bright, uh, this is the base that I went with. Now, I am doing a lot of the model in this color of red. I'll be honest, if I had my airbrush in 100% working condition, I would be using the airbrush to do most of this. Uh, but my airbrush has been acting up. I need to replace a few parts. And so I decided to go ahead and do most of this model with brushwork other than the priming. Um, I went with red on the bolter and the chain sword as it's sort of a classic scheme. It is a little bit samey with the armor. Um, if I was to do it over again, I might do them black um, just to, to contrast or maybe even white uh, because there's some white motifs in the model, but not as much as I would like. Now I'm using black contrast paint here to bring out the uh, depth of the robes. This is uh, one of my favorite contrast paints. It goes on really well. At some point in the painting process, I noticed that it was having a little bit of trouble adhering to this soft plastic. And I wound up switching over to an ink that went on a little bit thicker. But to start out with, I went with the contrast for my blacks.
You will notice that I'm blocking in the colors that will eventually become silver as well. I like to do that for uh, my models because I find that the silver pops better on a black background than on the silver or than on the gray that is. While contrast is nifty, it really shines the best on cloth. I think you really get a sense for the depth it provides in a single coat when you look at a you know very organic, uh, curvy kind of material like cloth. I tend to use a very fine brush and I tend to replace them quickly when they have issues. That is because I like to do as much of the contrast work without uh, doing masking or things like that. So I will have some overbrushing that I'll need to correct in every paint job, but I try my best to be as precise as possible when putting paints down. So I generally work with a size zero or size one brush. Uh, that is kind of, you know, what I stick to. Now for the whites, I am coming in with the Vallejo white, just their basic white game color. I find that it is sufficient to do pretty much all my white tasks. And in cleaning up the whites uh, with a nice thick base coat of, of paint, it allows me to then come back over with contrast paint in order to properly uh, get the, the right tone out of those bits. So. Uh, all of the leather and the skulls and that sort of thing get a new coat of white in order to brighten them up. Now, the nice thing about painting a model of this size is that all the little buckles and, and studs and all that stuff are gigantic. So it's really not terrible to go in and do the detail work of painting all the individual studs yourself. It does take a little while, but it is significantly more fun than trying to do it on a significantly smaller model. A lot of the example models that I looked at didn't paint the trim around the bust and I really thought that it was a, a nice design that deserved to be sort of picked out the way that uh, you know putting a you know a different color on the trim does it gives you that nice contrast. Again, practicing precision when you're working with these kinds of paints is a lifesaver. It will go a long way to saving you time and effort. Uh, you will notice that I will often hold a model on one part and then paint, and then I'll come back and do the other part later once the side that I was painting is dry. That is just because obviously I don't want to smudge the paint job on the other side. Um, you know, it's important to give things enough time. wasn't sure what color to do for the boots. Initially I was thinking leather, but I thought that uh, black would be a better uh, match with the overall look of the model. So that's what I went with.
Snake Bite Leather is hands down my favorite contrast paint, and you can see it going on here just beautifully. I mean, it really is like a one coat leather. You can come back and add some scratching and weathering and stuff, but it really does the job in one coat. Forgetting about this little bit, it's important not to lose any of the parts when you take your action figure apart and this one definitely got left behind a few times but you know I made it work now I come in I've sort of partially assembled the model but I'm still working on little detail bits I just was tired of it all being in pieces I didn't want to lose anything For the visors, we go with Orc Flesh Contrast Paint, get a nice bright, vibrant green. And then on the white areas, I come in with the Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint in order to give them more depth. I'm going to come back around and highlight them to make them brighter later. And here she is, more or less base coated. So I come in, of course, with white for highlights. I like to go a little bit aggressive because I'm going to be coming over with washes later that are going to do even more work to add depth to these colors. So I come on pretty thick highlighting. The paint dries a little bit transparent because white is not that bright. So I come back later and wash and then I clean up the wash and I even maybe do another highlight, etc. To highlight the reds, I come in with Mephiston Red and I gradually mix in more and more of the Fire Dragon Bright Orange color paint. And I find that that gives a really vibrant finish and uh, lets the highlights kind of stand out because they're almost into a different uh, realm, into being almost an orange. The highlights stand out a lot at this point, but I always keep in mind that I'm going to be coming over with a wash later that will help to blend those transitions a little bit. There's a lot of red on this thing, so the highlighting took forever. With the underside of the uh, loincloth dry, I go ahead and drop contrast skeleton horde into there. And now finally we start metallics. I am a huge fan of retributor armor for my golds and I wanted to do a bit of gold on this model. I wanted to keep a lot of the trim black, 
but I felt like uh, with the, the red and the black, it was a little bit dull and adding the brightness, the pop of some gold on the model really helped to kind of bring the whole scheme together. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it on video, but I did the metallics with the Vallejo metal color steel color, which is really lovely. And uh, it, it, wash, it takes washes really well. It goes on really smoothly. It's amazing through an airbrush or with a brush. Um, it, it's my altogether favorite uh, metallic silver paint. Um, they have a, a number of colors and I think they're all great for different applications. So Vallejo metal color is my go-to for airbrushing metallics. Now I come in with Mechanicus Gray uh, to dry brush the loincloth and the cloth on the arms. And then I come in with a smaller brush to do the highlight work on the armor. Now I start with Mechanicus Gray and then I gradually add Dawnstone to it to give it a lighter appearance and allow me to do more highlights. And of course more Vallejo uh, steel for the metallics. I go with a watered down Magos purple for washing the golds. I find that that brings them into the right tone range with the red that I've chosen and everything. It's really fun. We come in with oil washes. So this is a burnt umber oil paint that I have diluted with uh, white spirit. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to wash the whole model like I would with a, an acrylic wash. Uh, but the advantage of doing it this way is that I can then come back in with more white spirit and clean up the paint that is uh, on too thick without affecting the paint underneath. It's a really beautiful tool for uh, doing these kinds of washes. And the white spirit really helps to get those uh, oil paints into the crevices uh, when you dilute it a lot. So it, it becomes a very effective way to do kind of lining. Um, it, it's really just an all around great technique. So here I'm using a Q-tip for uh, the absorbency and coming in and cleaning up the bits that are too thick with the wash. Fortunately, it was not well framed. And there you have it. The final model after all the cleanup in all of her glory. I think a substantial improvement on the original.
Thanks, as always, to my patrons who help me keep this show on the air. And, of course, you can become a patron for as little as two U.S. dollars a month by going to patreon.com slash dome runners. So check me out there. And don't forget to check out the podcast, domerunners.buzzsprout.com, or search Dome Runners on iTunes or Google or anywhere else you get podcasts. And, of course, as always, everybody stay safe and don't forget to change your paint water.